Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's video is focusing around the idea of what would happen if we combine both strand unraveling and the SIVA particles together for a non-stop swarm of bees attacks. Now that last line of thinking may sound silly at first, but the idea of what we have is actually viable in a lot of content, including Endgame with its ease of use. With how much damage is being built up over time, you can effectively use this to take out large groups of majors and ultra enemies much faster and without the need to use your secondary or heavy to apply here. On top of that, it also works a charm as a boss DPS as you can apply your effects over and over again. Now, by using this setup, you can have a constant 17% kinetic damage buff towards your outbreak perfected, fast readiness creation and regeneration via fragments and stats, and most of all, a very consistent strand build that you can save and use for whatever content you have in mind. It's also simple, but quite devastating in the right hands. So let me show you how to achieve this. To start, you're going to want to have Weaver's Call where casting a rift will produce three threadlings and deploy any threadlings on you. You'll then want Mindspun Invocation to enhance your grenades, which will be threadling grenades. Consuming your grenade will generate five perch threadlings. We are going to follow a similar setup that we did in the past for the Swarm as Exotic Boot build we did, as I found that the best way to create unraveling is to use our threadlings non stop. The idea here is that with the Swarmer's boots, by the time I destroy a tangle, not only will it damage those nearby it, but it will also create two threadlings on spawn, which will chase targets down and apply unraveling as we speak. This, combined with Weaver's Call and Threader Generation, means that all of our threadlings created will apply this debuff on a large scale and thus cause havoc in the right contents. Looking into the fragments, we have Thread of Isolation, where landing position hits produces a 7 blast. Thread of Continuity, where Suspend, Unravel, and Silver Effects have their duration increased. A Thread of Generation, which allows damage to generate grenade energy. And Thread of Evolution, which allows Threadlings to travel further and deal additional damage. The Thread of Evolution and Generation are two fragments that are going to play a big part within how the build can function for longer. With Enhanced Threadlings, this will deal more damage to targets and then also give us grenade energy back doing so, so you can replicate a routine to always have your grenades fully replenished or passively regenerated over time with armor charges in play. Along with Swarmers, the Thread of Continuity will also play a big part in providing longer lasting unraveling as we play, and once you see this in action, you'll fully understand why this is such an underrated addition when using strand overall. For the mods and stats section, you're going to need to have a lot of grenade based mods to help with reducing the cooldown rate for your ability, but also focus quite a bit of it into your recovery stat as well. As we are using the threading grenades, they have around a 2 minute 32 base cooldown, which even at tier 9 to 10 discipline, is still a lot. So for this, you'll want to stick within the range as best as possible, but you're going to want to have the grenade kickstart mod and one bomber mod. Last time we did the Threadlings build, we overpacked the area to have more grenade mods so we can have a high uptime all the time. This time, however, you won't need to overpack it, as with Thread Generation, this will be giving you that extra boost you need for that high uptime. Plus, the bomber mods and the many ways to create auto power will also help with the factor alone. On top of that, grenades aren't the only way to create Threadlings within the build to achieve our goal. So as long as we use our other choices at hand, this should be enough for the end user. Recovery will need to be around the same level as Discipline, so we can utilize the Swarm as Exotic as well. In this case, I would advise you to have the Installation mod for getting class ability energy back upon collecting all the power, and then the Reaper mod where using your class ability and then getting killed with it will create a free all power. For armor charges, you're only going to need to have charged up mods, as like I said, the amount of ores being produced here will be a lot more than usual. With Firepower, Heavy Handed, Connect Siphon and Elemental Siphon mod of your choice, you will have at least 5 ways of creating ores of power throughout the entirety of the build. You are free to mix and match what you like, but the following will make sure that both your Weapon Search mods and Kickstarter mod are available when you need it most. And also, do be sure to add on the Time Dilation mod for the Surge mods in use. Now, lastly, the weapons being used will be strand related, but only for the heavy in our case. The main primary to have is the Outbreak Perfected Exotic Pulse, which everyone should at least invest in having at some point. A simple but great weapon to use in nearly every content you want, it has been one of the most reliable weapons to use when you need an ad clearing and boss DPS weapon all in one. 
The reason why the weapon is being used here today is so that we can apply unraveling onto targets while also applying the Seaver power force to targets as well if it's based on precision hits. You see, this is great when used on ultra or bosses or anything with a large crit spot and you need to take them down quickly, but without the use of our secondary or heavy being involved. With the two combined, you can sustain damage on a single target for quite a long time, and although Outbreak doesn't last as long as Unravel does, unless you do it continuously, you can still do a bit of damage which can help in the long run when you have only your primary left. On its own, the weapon is generally S tier in most content, but with Strand, it can become S plus tier once adjusted to properly. Afterwards, I would then advise you to get the circular logic machine gun with Hatchling and Envious Assassin, if possible. This weapon has some great perks on offer, and since it's an adaptive frame, it's going to feel pretty smooth to use. Mainly, the hatching perk is going to give you an extra option available creating tangles and getting those debuffs as we have mentioned throughout the build setup. If you don't want to use this, then the choices are still available as long as you keep your primary how it is. This is a simple yet amazing build that honestly doesn't require a lot for players to access it. I love the idea of making a Seaver build where you can apply non-stop stacking damage onto a target that will also chase down anyone else that stands near the affected target at large. It's like being able to command a bunch of bees and telling them to go commit crime on a bunch of enemies of humanity. The setup is easy to replicate as we have done this before in the past with Red Links in mind and even Solar, but now you're just expanding on the current option with Outbreak and the Sea of Particles at play. Being able to launch Threadling after Threadling onto a target and watch them detonate and apply their debuff is both awesome to watch and quite frightening when you think about its application as a sort of boss DPS. Now it won't be annihilating combatants and bosses alike, however it will do enough damage where you can focus onto other targets in the mean run. Something like this would be more suitable in most endgame content such as Master, GMs, Raids and any sort of difficulty in mind. However, as this is still new, it's not easy to say how effective it could be when used in GMs for example. I can see it being great for shutting down large groups at distance and I can see it being effective on anything that has an easy to hit crit spot. The only way I can see this setup being countered is if you're up against a mobile or heavily shielded target. Our friendlings can deal with both if done fast enough, but I would say that against Rolk as an example. It will be too hard to pull off because of how mobile he is unless you have a constant debuff applied to them. Any content that has any sort of match game involved may also cause a few issues here and there and although your energy slot is open and up to you, you won't always have the room to be flexible to do so in most combats. I think overall the build does what it needs to do pretty well and if you want to use it in end game then you can as the setup will allow you to do so. However, match game and mobile combatants may prevent the build from being successful if you can pocket its effects large and wide. You can improve the setup however you like, but I'm pretty happy with the results provided and this is the sort of setup that anyone can use, whether you're new, returning or currently playing. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then please leave a like and a sub bell here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.